Bacon is just plain good. I've recently taken to making my own in bulk. In the driver's seat, I can start with a relatively inexpensive slab of pork belly and create my own personal blend of salt, sugar, and seasonings to flavor it with. Plus, homemade bacon easily beats out anything you'll get from a package. When you buy pork belly, the skin is usually left intact, so you'll need to remove it before proceeding. Start by separating the skin from the fat layer at one corner. Then, make short, horizontal cuts, pulling the skin back as you move across the belly. Take your time to ensure that you leave as much of the thick layer of fat intact as possible. After all, fat absorbs flavor, so once you've cured and smoked the belly, you'll be glad you left it all on there. I like to use maple sugar as my rub's base. It's made from maple syrup and gives the bacon a sweetness that perfectly complements the meatiness and smoke flavor. I also use pink salt, which contains nitrates. This prevents bacterial growth and preserves the meat's red color. I could have tweaked my recipe to work without it, but it's a smart safety measure and it extends the life of the bacon. To make the dry cure, combine one cup of maple sugar, one half cup of kosher salt, one tablespoon of cracked black peppercorns, two teaspoons of minced fresh thyme, three quarters teaspoon of pink salt, and one crumbled bay leaf in a small bowl. Stir this together until evenly combined. Place the pork belly in a 13 by nine inch glass baking dish and rub the surface of the belly with the dry cure mixture. Be sure to cover all sides and edges of the belly well. I use a 13 by nine inch dish for this, but a two gallon Ziploc lock bag would work well too. Once you've coated the pork belly with the rub, cover the dish with plastic wrap and put it in a refrigerator. I flip it every other day, which ensures that as the belly releases liquid, the cure is evenly distributed and stays in direct contact with the meat. After seven to 10 days, the belly will be fully cured, at which point it will feel firm to the touch, yet still pliable. After a quick rinse under cold water to remove any excess cure, because it will be too salty if you don't, it's ready to smoke. While smoking the belly, you want to maintain a moderate heat level. Too much heat and all the fat will render from the bacon, not enough and the bacon won't cook through. To do this on a charcoal grill, open your grill's bottom vent halfway and place a large disposable roasting pan over one side of the grill. Fill it with two cups of water. Then arrange one quart of unlit charcoal briquettes evenly over the other side. Light two quarts of charcoal and when the top coals are partially covered with ash, pour them evenly over the unlit coals. By placing lit coals on top of unlit briquettes, you can achieve the appropriate temperature, about 200 to 225 degrees, without having to replenish the coals halfway through cooking. Next, place the wood chunks on top of the charcoal. Set the cooking grate in place, cover, and open the lid vent halfway. It takes about five minutes for the wood chunks to begin smoking. Just let the initial burst of smoke cook off before putting the meat on the grill. The first few seconds of smoke can impart a bitter flavor on the bacon. Place the belly on the cooler side of the grill over the water-filled pan. I find it best to place the pork belly fat side up to allow the rendered fat to base the meat as it cooks. Cover and position the lid vent over the pork. After one and a half to two hours on the grill, the bacon will register 150 degrees and have a deep amber hue. Remove it from the grill and let the bacon cool to room temperature before slicing. Since the bacon is smoked until it registers 150 degrees, it's fully cooked once you take it off the grill. You can either pan fry it in the traditional way or you can serve it cold, thinly sliced like prosciutto or lardo. Whichever way you slice it, this bacon is delicious. Wrapped tightly in plastic wrap, it will keep refrigerated for up to one month or frozen for up to two months. And there you go, do-it-yourself bacon. You can find this and over 100 other recipes in the America's Test Kitchen DIY cookbook. There's everything in there from how to make eggnog to almond butter to even American cheese. Some really cool stuff, so check it out.